Okay, fire away. Hard hitting questions. Let's come up with them. I'm ready. I've rehearsed my answers. Uh, c coach, with the running game, what are some things you guys have been working on or were even worked on today in practice to sort of try to figure that out, I guess? Um, well, you know, I think let, let, let's look at it, you know, based upon um, last week's game. Um, one, a and is, is is pretty good um, against the run. Um, two, you know, a lot of the run game uh, – you know, for us is, is based upon individual matchups, you know, winning individual matchups. We lost some individual matchups, not collectively, but some individual matchups that made uh, the run game less effective. And, and then, um, you know, quite frankly, just making good decisions based upon uh, when we should, um, you know, throw the ball out and when we should run the football um, based upon numbers. So, Similarly to what we've talked about before, those are decisions that are made, um, you know, post-snap. So we made some poor decisions post-snap. Um, we, we certainly uh, didn't execute at times. Um, and, and it's not just the five guys. It's, it's a collection of everything. So when our run game has not gone well, it's been we've lost some individual matchups up front. Um, the quarterback is instrumental in, in reading, you know, whether he has a loaded box or not. Um, and, and then, you know, clearly, you know, when there's an extra hat, making, making somebody miss. And, and we just collectively um, didn't execute at a high level in the running game from that standpoint. Coach, kind of how have you guys broken down practice in terms of, like, how much the week is devoted to looking back at last game and how much is like, you know, looking forward and also just how has the team responded to just what you guys have been pointing out about what went wrong last game, what they need to work on? Yeah. I mean, look, uh, what we did well is, is the guys prepared uh, to go into uh, a very difficult environment and, uh, you know, perform uh, at a high level. They, they started off in the first half, had a, double-digit lead, and with six minutes to go in the third quarter, um, you know, still held uh, a lead and, and had a chance uh, to add on to that lead. 52 of the first 73 plays, you know, our guys played exceedingly well. It was the last 23 plays. So this is much more about um, how do you finish a game? Now, we've been on the other end of two of them where we didn't play well for the first 52 plays but played great in the last 23. Now the shoe's on the other foot, right, where, you know, we don't play well for the last 22, 23 plays. And, and our guys have to learn from that. So what we did well is we, we prepared well, we came out emotionally, physically, did the right things, but we didn't finish you got to finish in, in, in this league. Um, we saw that in the South Carolina game. We saw that in the, Miss, in the Ole Miss game. We finished. Maybe we didn't start as well as we wanted, but we finished. This game, we didn't finish. So we talked about that, about finishing. And, and then we went to work on some of the, the things that we believe um, we need to get better at on both sides of the ball. And, and so... It's a little bit of here are the things you did really well. Here are the things we got to work on, and then you know let's uh, you know let's get some of the young guys some work. We we had a little bit of a scrimmage with the young guys, so um, that that was uh, that was the focus today. Brian over here. Uh, Greg Penn said after the game Saturday night that the defense wasn't prepared for Marcel Reed to come into the game. So could you speak on? if you guys did prepare for, for him to play any snaps before the game on Saturday and, and you know, I, I guess sort of, you know, just kind of piggyback off of what he said. Yeah, you know, I don't know that, that Greg was referring to the fact that we weren't prepared. You know, you, you don't, 
you don't run a defense expecting the number two quarterback to come in. We've prepared for that kind of offense. Everybody runs what they ran. They ran zone read, and, and they ran bash. And, and we saw that last week. You know, we saw it. We've seen it every week. And, and so, um, you know, again, uh, those are things that we just didn't execute as well. Um, and, and we prepared for uh, Connor to play. Um, and, and so a lot of the reps were focused on the offense that, that Connor is part of. Um, but throughout camp, throughout spring ball, throughout the course of the season, we have a defense and a structure that stops quarterback runs, that stops read option, because uh, you have to. And so the fact of the matter is we just didn't execute it as well. And, and, and that's the fact of the matter. Hey, Coach. We haven't really seen Garrett you know, struggle like he did in that second half. He certainly had a lot of high points this season, too. What's the process of kind of building his confidence back up going into uh, the bye week here and then obviously the Bama game next week? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the process of, of a first-time starter at quarterback. Um, you weren't here, but some of these ladies and gentlemen that are here uh, in Jaden Daniels' first year, you know, we threw for 86 yards against Auburn. Um, you know, we barely got out of Arkansas after a 13-10 win. Um, you know, we got our butts kicked against Tennessee. And... Um, Jaden Daniels, they're ready to, um, I think, put up a statue in Washington right now. Um, there, there were many, many people calling for his job here uh, in Baton Rouge earlier in his tenure. Um, so, you know, it, it's, it's the life of the quarterback um, at any level, whether it's college or the NFL. And, and Garrett knows that. You know, he comes from a family. His dad's a quarterback coach. So he's built for this, right? And, and he is, uh, he's not a guy that is going to shy away from it. As you know, he was in, I think, the press uh, room, and he took full accountability and responsibility for what happened, which, as you know, the quarterback gets too much of the credit and gets too much of the blame, right? But having said that, he is up for the challenge of – getting better and he's out there and we're working with him uh, to, to get him to the level that he needs to be um, and he's excited about doing it. So I'm not really worried about uh, loss of confidence with him because he knows this, you know, he knows what this looks like and he knows others that have been here that are having incredible success in the NFL right now have had to gone had gone through a similar path of development, and and he's going through that too. Brian, uh, obviously the kicking game was it was great has been great most of the year, and then the Saturday was a problem. You said it's not going to happen again. Are you going to are you going to make some Say, uh, uh, the kicking game and the problems with the field goals? Um, yeah, it, it, it the battery you know the battery yeah. is is the the snapper, the holder, and the kicker. We've got to get them together as one. It's not one without the other. All three of those guys um, have to work in unison, and, and they were out of sync. Um, as, as well as they were working the week before, they, I don't know what happened, um, but they were out of sync. And, you know, we had the untimely snap. Um, we didn't have a great hold. Uh, but as you know, it's the kicker who, who's going to get the blame uh, because he's the one ultimately that is, is out there getting the, the credit or the blame. But it's the battery that has been, that was highly ineffective um, for us against Texas A&M. And that battery, um, we got some work today on it, um, which, you know, you very rarely put that group out there in an off week. But uh, we had to get them out there today and, and spend a lot of time with them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, in the NFL, they change kickers and things like that all the time. Yeah, they fire have, them. Yeah, you don't, have that, you don't have that luxury. But I mean, are you, no. I guess where I was going, are you considering maybe trying someone else at a snapper or a holder or something like that? 
Yeah, you know, in the NFL, what they do is, as I said, and, and I'm not making light of this because you're losing a job, but, but there's a bank of long snapping professionals and they can just dip into that bank and pay them. We don't have that. Like you, you can't like just go pick somebody out of the dorms and say, come on in, you know, we just don't have those guys. So what you really have to do is, is work harder with those guys and, you know, trust that they're gonna make progress and, 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 and work as a unit. They're all capable. It was a bad night, and, and that night can, as I said, you can't have a night like that. Um, it's, 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 and it's, for me to have a night like that when they were so good all year um, is, is really um, troubling, but at the same time, we're going to get it fixed. Uh, I know it was a bad night. Are, did Dellinger going down exacerbate the situation in the run game to a point that you could see that on tape? Well, I mean, look, he's the starter, but one guy, you know, going down did not affect the running game to the level that it did. Um, you know, certainly, as I mentioned earlier, um, there are bits and pieces to it. And, you know, we... We did not win some individual matchups. We made some mistakes uncharacteristically um, from some other guys that are on the offensive line. And, and quite frankly, you know, we made some uh, choices to run into boxes that were not conducive and we should have been doing some other things. So it, 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 was, it was a little bit of all those things. And even with that, even with that, and we don't want to live that way, um, it's still going to come down to the inability um, to take care of the football and the inability to slow them down um, in, in, in the second half, um, you know, with, with the quarterback, uh, the new quarterback coming in. That, that really was the, the difference. On a totally different note, are some teams just not built to be screen teams? Does it really dictate personnel as far as being able to have an effective screen game? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I've had some teams that have had incredible opportunities to throw screens at any time, any place. Really prolific. Um, I feel like they should take my screen card away from me uh, right now. Um, and and I, I have a such pride in throwing screens, and I, I really do. I'm not saying that. You know, I mean it. And it's very difficult. We're, we're, we're not built for it right now, um, and we want to be. Uh, just kind of along those lines with Dellinger, is he feeling okay? Or I know he went down. And that he had a high out. ankle sprain, so okay. we're hoping that this week becomes a recovery week for him. Okay. And then just uh, with Mason Taylor, it seems like every time he's making a catch, it's a big catch. But I'm sure you guys would love him to get the ball more than, you know, three times in a game. Has there been any kind of conversations about how you can, you know, continue to get him the ball and kind of moving the offense forward? You know, maybe, maybe I didn't look at the numbers, but I think he's is, – is that all he's averaging, three a game? Mm. You know, I think he's targeted quite a bit, um, and, and I know he's an integral part of what we do, and, and I know Garrett looks toward, you know, getting him the football. Um, you know, I, I didn't really do a deep dive on him not getting the football over the last few weeks as much as um, I, I, he's such an integral part of what we do. Yeah, so – Looking ahead a little bit, we saw Alabama this past weekend kind of start to look like their old selves again. So kind of what's been the game plan in your mind going into what's that? What's that old self look like? <laughs> what, was Nick Saban back? Nick's yeah. on the sideline? Just he's winning. everywhere. <laughs> game day. He's at game day, too. Did you know that? Oh, my God. I'm not sure what the old Alabama – they're going to have – they've got great personnel. Um, they're well-coached. 
you know, we certainly know that it's going to be a great challenge. Um, but that's the SEC. Every every week, it's it's going to be the same. I don't know that there is a sense that our team can't, if they're playing to their best when their best is needed, that they can't compete and play with anybody. Um, we certainly have to play four quarters, um, and I know that they're. They're anxious and excited about the opportunity to play at Tiger Stadium. And, and look, and I think I said this in the, in the presser after, you know, you, you have a 24-hour rule, but um, it's easier to have that when after a win. The 24-hour after a, a loss sticks around a lot longer, and these guys are going to want to play, and they can't wait to play Alabama. Uh, just sort of add on to – sort of a follow-up to Cobble's question about the screens. Um, what mm -hmm. makes a screen team and what doesn't make a screen team? I, I'm, I'm genuinely curious about Yeah, yeah, that. no, that's yeah. a good question. So timing is important, right? You, you know, there, there's the old uh, adage, you know, um, don't speed up um, a weak hitter's bat, right? You know, don't throw off speed pitches if he can't hit a fastball. Well, you know, if you don't have a really good pass rush, you know, don't throw screens, right? They're really meant for teams that are blitzing and bringing pressure and have a great pass rush. So you got to match that with the down and distance, right? So, you know, if you're getting a lot of drop eight, if you're getting a lot of defenses that are not rushing, screens aren't very good against them. So you got to hit the calls. So screen games are really about the art and science of the call when it comes to screens. And then you got to get linemen out in space. So when they changed the rules where you can't cut in space, it became the screen game became a lot more difficult because those big guys are like elephants on roller skates. And, and they're out there, and they're like, you know, and they can't cut, right? And they're not as quite mobile as some others. And... So the screen game becomes one where you want a great pass rush, you want to hit it quickly, and, and you want to be able to get upfield. And that means you've got to get linemen out quickly and be able to strike and, and get north and south. And, and that is, that's, a, that's a proposition that requires a lot of athleticism and a lot of uh, hitting the call at the right time in the right place. Does that do a good job? At, Yeah, that's much more of a, a, a perimeter throw where we're just blocking. You know, that, that doesn't include any of the linemen. That's really a, a flare um, to the back. We wouldn't, even, we wouldn't even call it a screen. And the linemen have to be involved in moving for us to really, for that to hit a screen for us. We haven't thrown a lot of screens. Good.